Now, even according to the pattern, like the pattern for this is literally rectangles. So we're taking um, basically the width of the fabric in straight rectangles at a specific length to make the skirt. Um, so it's actually pretty simple. It'll be really quick to cut. Just kind of cut big old straight rectangles from one end of the fabric to the other. And then that's going to get um, gathered or pleated down to fit the bodice. Uh, and then that's also when we're going to deal with the rest of this fabric, because the whole point of why I bought this embroidered fabric is that it is stripes of this. So I'm going to end up taking time to cut this out, probably, you know, slicing it right down the center of each of these, folding under and um, applying this in a, ba uh, a band to the skirt, to the bottom of the skirt. Here I am cutting the skirt panels on the floor. I chose to use a ruler and chalk and the recommended measurements for length and width from the Berta pattern rather than the actual paper. I ended up with three panels the width of the fabric. The finished width of the skirt didn't need to be exactly precise. I took my embroidered fabric and found the center between each row, carefully marking that out and then cutting it into strips to make the trim. And here's a little bit of me doing a test placement on my mannequin to see how I liked the idea of this trim and if I wanted to add anything else. I just wanted to take a second to talk about how I ended up doing the seams on the skirt because I really wanted the seam to be nearly invisible. So the method that I chose is I picked part of the pattern, the repeated um, stripe, and I pressed it back very, very carefully so that I could not see it. Um, and then I took the time to very carefully Um, line it up and pin it in place, pin it from the inside. So fold it open. We're going to take a couple of pins. So I am getting rid of uh, these two stripes. So I need to pin it next to this one over here. That was, that was the thing that took me a minute to sort of mentally figure out is if I was putting the pin in here, it needs to come out next to the stripe here. And then I was just trying to make sure that everything went through as perfectly as possible so that when I uh, folded it out and actually took the time to sew the seam, uh, it would be virtually invisible. This one might be a little bit close to that red. That was where it got a little complicated was getting it like right next to where it needed to be. So give it a second. Well, let's see. Yep. Kind of just rides like right next to the seam. And then when it would be sewn it would literally end up being almost invisible. So now I'll insert a couple of shots of the seams on the skirt uh, so you can see what it looked like with the pattern, the stripe pattern matched uh, and the uh, pinking on the inside because I ended up taking this seam allowance after I sewed it and made sure everything was perfectly how I wanted it. I pinked away the extra seam allowance down to um, well, about half an inch, and then I ended up just leaving it all pressed to one side because it looked nice that way, so yeah. I love how you can just barely spot the seam in this picture. And here is the pinked seam inside. And here I am, blind hemming the skirt. You should absolutely check out my other video on blind hemming where I go into detail about how to do this, how to set up your machine, how to fold your fabric, everything you need to know. I'll put a link here and in the description box below. Here's a lovely picture of the pattern matching I did on the trim and me placing the trim. I unfortunately did not bother to uh, film the entire process of me pressing this back and pinning it to the skirt. I did the blind hem on the skirt first so that I could have a straight edge to place the trim on. I set the trim up uh, two inches from the bottom edge. 
This I carefully pinned the border all the way around and then made sure that the lap was in the center back. Then I carefully pinned the top edge. First I sewed it all the way around the bottom edge to make sure that everything was nice and straight and that there wasn't anything shifting or whatnot. And then I took the time to make any adjustments that I needed to before sewing around the entire top. Um, and uh, here I am running out of bobbin and therefore having to spend some time doing that. Yeah. I'd like to point out at this time that the skirt has not been attached to anything and I am doing all of this hemwork first. I will make adjustments if needed to the seam allowance on the waist in order to even out the hem. However, this skirt is so full and poofy that I don't think any will be needed. Learning how to adjust a hem through the waist is a really useful trick for when you're working with anything that has a strong border. So a fabric that is already printed with a border, or in this case because I am working with very straight trim, um, sometimes it's just easier to do it in the first place. Sewing 160 some odd inches of uh, straight twim trim twice really took a long time. <laughs> I really had to make sure that the trim and the fabric didn't slip or create any tiny folds on itself. So I worked in very small sections and uh, had to move everything around a lot just to keep it all nice and happy. So this section um, is going to be about pleating the skirt on to the bodice. Um, I like to use this method um, that's basically having uh, each section of fabric uh, down into the amount of space that you need it to and then um, you fold it all in different directions for the pleats. Um, you can kind of think of it mathematically. It's, uh, it's like Xenio's theory, you know, where you keep having sections down. So you're going to take um, your skirt and you're going to mark center front, center back. Um, well, no, you're going to mark the center front. Okay, so in this case, I want to put a four inch area of flat in the front. There's two reasons for this. Uh, one, it helps so that the pleats don't end up lapping over each other, and I have an opening in the center front, so I need that space um, clear of pleats for the zipper. Also, it helps keep the front of um, the dress flatter, so it's a little more flattering if you have a flat front in that little area. You can do somewhere between four to five inches. Um, that's usually what I do on, like, when I'm doing this pleating method for, like, a skirt. I usually leave uh, a flat section kind of in about the five inches in center front, maybe a little bit bigger, since I'm a little bit bigger. Four or five inches is good it, uh, on smaller bodies. You can go a little bigger on bigger bodies. Um, but it just it helps keep kind of everything smooth. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna mark, I've got my center fronts marked on my bodice. I marked two inches out on each side from there. So I'm going four inches. I'm gonna try that, see if that works. I don't wanna get too crazy because then it'll be a lot of pleats farther away in the back. So mark two inches on each side. So then I'm gonna take my center mat back and I'm gonna match it up to those two inch marks and mark my half point on my skirt um, from the uh, two inch mark into the center back. So mark, mark the half point. And then I'm gonna take that and fold it again and mark the eights, all right? So does that make sort of sense? You'll end up with eight marks. Well, no, you'll end up with more than eight marks on your skirt, but um, it'll technically be nine because you've got your two center fronts in this case, or it would be nine if you had two center backs, if you were having a center back um, open close. Uh, so then here on the bodice, I've marked the corresponding. So I have, this is actually, so this section is going to be flat. And then from here through to the center back, I've marked eight sections. And I just start with eight. Um, and then everything else I kind of just divide and eyeball as I go. It's a very quick method once you kind of figure it out. Um, and you're just, you're pinning, like you're dividing and pinning in the center of each section. And then you'll end up pushing all of the pleats in one direction um, so that you get them to go backwards. It will, uh, it'll make more sense like visually as you watch me do it, I think, I hope. <laughs> um, it, this is a, I used to use this a lot for um, period skirts. Uh, it's great for, it's a great way to do anything for like a quick Victorian to, um, I'm trying to think what else, we, like 
We used it for all sorts of stuff. We used it, yeah, we used it in most of our shows for petticoats. It was a very quick way to do that. It's a little bit faster, personally, to me than gathering. It also looks a little bit nicer. Um, gathering can get a little messy. It can also get a little bulky. Um, so I like the pleat method. Um, yeah. So I'm going to start pinning this, and then I probably, I'm going to do a little section and kind of explain, and then I probably will cut and finish in hyperlapse. You want lots of pins available, um, because this does take quite a few pins. I'm going to pin, um, my front two inches flat. So this will give me four inches total flat in the front. And what this does is allow, so eventually there's going to be a pleat and the pleat is going to end up going this way. So that way that there's, there's empty space here. So the pleat doesn't end up in this seam allowance over here that I need for the zipper. I'm actually just going to go through and I'm going to find my next mark. I'm an X mark on here, which is my eighth. So this mark on the bodice is halfway between uh, the side, the side mark halfway point that I made and this two inch in mark here. Not the center front, two inches in. We're doing everything half between that and the center back or eighth between that and the center back. So now I have an eighth of my skirt and an eighth of my bodice pinned together. Um, I'm going to speed through me breaking down these sections because there's a lot of me sort of rambling and saying I'm sorry and, and that I hope you understand what's going on here, which I really truly do. <laughs> Once you have the first uh, set of or sections connected to your bodice or waistband or whatever it is that you're going to use, it really becomes much more easier to deal with all of this fabric. So I'm going to just do a section of this really quick so you kind of understand what I'm, gonna, what I'm talking about. So now I've got these two pins here. I'm going to take them. I'm going to match them up. That gives me a half here and a half on this side. I'm going to put a quick pin here. Match these up. Put a quick pin on this side. I'm going to open it back up. And then I'm going to line up those two pins. And then I'm going to pin together right there. Okay? So that just halved that section again. And then we're going to do it one more time. So I'm going to take this other. Now I've got two smaller sections. I'm going to do that again and again until I have... Um, roughly one inch deep pleats. So these are going to be kind of tight pleats, honestly. Actually, they're a bit deeper than one inch. They're going to be like two inches. So I just did that again and again. And let's see if we can... So now I end up with bunch of little like loops okay and then you're just going to literally push them all forward this one will get split a half again here we go you're going to push them all forward and suddenly you have a row of pleats so I'm just going to continue this process through the rest of it. Then I'll go back through and I'll very nicely pin these in place, adjust them. But you see, this is what I was talking about where I was saying that I needed to have a certain amount of flat fabric so that this pleat didn't accidentally go into this seam allowance over here. So, all right. Fast forward, yeah. The main reason I like this method is I don't have to do any math ahead of time. I don't have to think about multiplying the waist measurement of the garment by a certain amount to get the exact finished width of the skirt so that I can have one inch pleats or one and a half inch pleats or any of that. Um, and you know, I don't have to then also remember to take a seam allowance into account in all of that math either. Um, I feel like this way, as long as I have about three to four times the waist measurement, I can get really nice pleats that turn out very evenly and uh, do exactly what I want them to. When I first learned 
this method, I took a lot of time to measure with rulers and make sure the spacing was perfect. But over countless shows that we used this method for skirts, uh, I got really great at eyeballing the pleats. So you can definitely measure if that's your preference. And there's always the option of matching the pins, like as I explained before. That's a really great way to find your um, half distances. But uh, as the pleats get smaller, it's almost easier to flatten them out and eyeball the centers uh, and just sort of place your pins that method. Okay, so I have now pinned this entire thing in place. Your next question may be, well, how do I turn this into pleats? So like I was saying earlier, you're gonna basically end up pushing them all um, a direction in order to make the pleat. So the knife edge of the pleat will end up being where the pin is. I'm going to push all of them towards the front from the center back. So all of the right side will go towards the front, all of the left side will go towards the front from the center back point. And I'm gonna press that all in place even like nicely adjust if, if I need to adjust any of these a little bit to make them look nicer or lay nicer I might um, like tweak tweak how they're sitting in there um, I'm gonna push them all to the front and then I'm gonna pin them all in place before I sew so taking this and pushing it towards the center front then if you want you can literally lift this pin and put it back in place. Taking this next one, pushing it, and this is where I said that you may need to spend some time like finagling your pleats, making them, adjusting them, making them look nice, push it towards the center front, pin it. If you don't want to pull your pin out, you can use another pin. You just need to have a lot of pins, right? I've done this enough. I know that now that I've got this pin, I can remove this pin here. So it's every other pin that you're moving. So this one is the one that is creating your knife pleat. This one is free. So now this one is free as this one creates your next pleat. And you just keep working down the line. So see, because inside they're going towards the front, so when you turn it to the outside, they will be going towards the back. Okay? That as you do this, you want to make sure that everything is laying nice and smooth as you're shifting these all into place. Okay, so I have all of my pleats pinned in place. Right here is the center back, and I actually chose to just slightly shift my pleats around so that I could get this stripe to line up because this part is actually going to be relatively flat. My pleats are going to come to either side of it. So um, I tried to make sure that they kind of matched on both sides. Uh, yeah. And as I was pinning, there was a couple other places where I made sure that the knife edge of the pleat uh, and the pattern ended up lining up with some of the stripes of the bodice. And I chose to do that visually over having all of the pleats be the exact same depth. But overall, um, the doing it in mathematical halves and having um, taking a half measurement of each thing really does get you fairly uh, even and evenly dispersed and um, pleats like most of these you are uh, about a half an inch showing in between pleat uh, give or take a few that I kind of wiggled around uh, in different methods so yeah, they're very, very, very close to being, like, mathematically even. Um, and they're close enough for what I feel this project needs. Like I said, uh, the visual, in some cases, of the stripe lining up in my brain won over the, um, won over the need for perfection in the pleat. Um, and, uh, you know, not that anyone's even going to see it because there's going to be a tie over this point of the dirndl with the um with the apron but still you know 
And then sometimes it's just those little, like, little small touches. And see, if you turn it out, this is what I'm, I'm talking about. I haven't sewn this yet, but you can see, like, here's a happy little accident. Like, that's how close that candle lining up. So today I sewed the skirt onto the bodice um, after staying up late last night getting it all pinned and perfected. Um, I spent a little bit of time steaming and pressing all of the pleats so that they uh, look nice, making sure everything kind of falls how I want it to. Um, so let's take a look at it. So this still doesn't have the zipper in it, but here we go. It's all sewn on nice and pretty like. Whee. Yeah, I'm actually really rather happy how this turned out. Um, there's a couple little wobbles, but not much. Actually, the biggest one to me, I feel like, and I think you can even see it right here, is for some reason, this center back panel just goes up a little bit. Um, and I think I'm going to adjust that because the hem in the back was, that was the only place where it actually was a little short. Um, for the most part, the hem was all pretty even all the way around. Um, but yeah, so I think it turned out quite nice. You can see all of my mess in my sewing slash second bedroom. Um, yeah. So the next step of my dirndl calls for putting in an invisible zipper in the front. I'm debating if I'm actually going to use an invisible zipper or not. I have one, obviously. I also am kind of just avoiding the, this part of the project for now. Yeah. 